very quick update because I have actually achieved something already today, only an hour in. I'm enormously pleased with myself, <laughs> so I have to show it off. Um, so this is the prototype I'm working on that's currently called GHGC, and uh, my problem for today to solve, or well, one of them, was uh, how to get the game to know where the cursor is pointing. Like when I click, I want the game to know what position in the world I'm clicking on in an intuitive way, um, in a way that makes sense to the player. And I have got it working. Look, I can click, and it's creating a little object to show me it knows where I've clicked. I click on here, you can't see the object being created, but it is there. Um, and this looks kind of cool, I like this. <laughs> I can even, oh, they're awesome, they're solid. <laughs> Holy shit, this is a game already. But I can, uh, if I reset the whole thing, I could probably make a platform for myself, right? Yes! <laughs> and then immediately get stuck. <laughs> awesome. Um, and I'm going to tell you how I got that working in a minute, but um, for those who aren't interested in the technical details, I also want to try something briefly beforehand. When I click it's creating a thing called the cursor trace block and if I add a component to that uh, of a rigid body that makes it a physics object and then uh, when I play hopefully these will... yes they fall! <laughs> I can now create rain. And yeah now if I click on the solid thing it, it pops out so you can tell it is being created at the right, right location and the physics engine is saying hey these things can collide and just ejects them. But these things unlike the player are not locked to the um, locked into this plane so they can actually fall off the front or the back and as you can see I can sweep them around my guy never falls over because he is locked in like his rotation can't change and he can't fall forwards or backwards he can only fall up or down and move left and right but that's so cool look it's a game of like crushing blocks <laughs> uh, a couple of people have warned me against using the unity physics engine the built-in version because it will be difficult to kind of tweak to my liking later and that's worrying um, and they're probably right but I'm going to keep using it for now because, like I say, I'm probably going to get a programmer at some point and get them to rewrite everything I've done uh, in whatever way they think is best once they've seen the kind of the gist of the game. And secondly, I just need it to be really quick to get up and running. I can't code collision again myself. <laughs> it took fucking months in Game Maker, and this is orders of magnitude harder than Game Maker. So I really don't want to code my own collision system or um, any physics stuff. I don't absolutely have to. I'm going to stick with Unity's way of doing it until it actually breaks. Um, so that's <laughs> all I have to show in terms of the actual uh, what I've made, but if you're interested I will explain how it works, or what the code looks like. The code looks like this, and so far I'm still in my like due diligence mode, my kind of my good programmer mode, where I still have the effort and energy to comment everything I do and explain what it is. So uh, I couldn't find a single actual guide to doing exactly this, just finding out where the cursor is pointing in the world. Um, and it's not a trivial problem, it kind of seems one of those things that intuitively seems like oh surely you can just create an object where the cursor is but where the cursor is in a 3D environment is actually ambiguous like the cursor is on a 2D plane on the screen and uh, we haven't defined at any point where it is in terms of the depth dimension, the third dimension so the game doesn't know whether the cursor is meant to be glued to the camera that we're looking through or whether it's kind of level with the player or whether it's in front of the player or behind the player um, so when you tell it to create an object where the cursor is, there's no way of doing that because you can't tell it what the depth of that thing should be. Um, so there might be a much easier way to do this, but the only way I could figure out to do it was to um, create a plane at the at z equals zero. So that means uh, where the player is, basically all that stuff that I put in the world, that's all of the z coordinate of all of that is zero, which means it has a depth of zero, it's neither forwards nor backwards. Um, and so that's the plane I'm interested in. That area is the kind of game world, really. And so it's only where the cursor hits that that I'm interested in. When I want to create something, I want to create it there, like level with the player. And to do that, I have to create a plane there, like a flat surface. And you define that in a way that looks really weird, but makes sense to me because um, I studied some of this stuff in maths. Um, you define it by a normal, which means a line coming directly out of it. And then uh, that's defining an object that is going to be created. Um, and then every frame we check to see if we've clicked. If we have clicked, then we cast a ray from the camera to the mouse x and y coordinates. Think of that as a line going through all of the positions the cursor could conceivably be in in the world. Like it's sort of a, a line of perspective. 
um, going from the camera angle all the way into the world and the cursor could be anywhere along that line so we want to look at a particular place on that line and it's obvious to us where that should be but the, the game has no idea so we have to look at, we set up a variable to store how far down that line we want to be we don't know that yet and then the next thing we do is use a function on this plane that we set up, we set up that plane at z equals zero um, and there's a thing you can do with planes where you measure you find a ray and you say how far along that ray this plane crosses it which is exactly what we want right now, we want to know how far down that ray you have to go before you, should, you hit this plane and you should stop and that's the position in 3D space that we're interested in and once you've got that, this function outputs that it's a bit weird, I've never seen a function like this before but one of the parameters actually gets changed by the function so that word out means that this variable is going to be output by this function um, so distance from camera to z equals zero is that distance that we're after and then so after that function runs that will be set correctly and the next thing we want to do is uh, store that position we want to save that position as the world position of cursor which is this, this holy grail we've been after um, and that is defined as uh, find that ray we talked about from the camera to the mouse and get the point this distance along it and that distance is the one we just found so that pulls together all the different things that we've found so far and then saves that as a position in 3D space, that will be an x, y and z coordinate and then the last thing we do is we create a cursor mark object at that position we just found and at that just means the direction it's facing which doesn't matter so we just leave it as the default and that creates the thing so that's what's happening here. It's secretly casting a, a plane all around here and then when we click it fires a ray at that plane and uh, then it creates an object there in theory, although I think I've actually just broken the code. <laughs> but yeah, that's how the code works.